Hey, it's Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, we're just going to do a quick update on the last server room tour. I've made some changes since then, and we're just going to go over what they are. So, first thing is I've been working on moving some of the things out of this Cisco switch and uh, over to one of these back of the rack switches. So we'll get to that whenever we move around there. I'm going to go over all the stuff on the front first. Um, move some stuff over here. So if you hadn't seen the previous videos, go check those out. But basically a summary is all of these things at the top, pretty much everything you can see in the shot right now, I want to move over to this rack and kind of make this left rack only for networking devices and make the right rack only for servers and these battery backups which that brings us to the next big upgrade is we no longer have a bunch of desktop UPS's powering all of these servers. We have some nice 3000 VA uh, line interactive UPS's. So I would have liked some online ones but I got these for a good deal. Uh, I do need to change the batteries soon. They are a few years old and the batteries are past their replace by date but they still hold a charge and they do hold the load. It says estimated about, I think, 15 minutes of runtime. Uh, I think I have about 13 amps or so split between them, so that's the total load of both these racks. Um, we do have the bottom of this area all cleared out now. That used to have a Dell Optiplex that I was using as a VMware host, uh, and it had a couple of desktop UPSs back there. So we have those over here now, which are decommissioned. Uh, you can see the water spot on the top of this Optiplex. Um, I'm lucky whenever the ceiling leaked that this uh, machine didn't actually get ruined by the water. The water kind of just pulled up on top. Uh, some of the other equipment it rolled down the back and got in the power supply or the motherboard and fried it. But this one still works. Um, but I don't need it anymore because we have these nice Dell servers, so I've migrated all the VMs off of that and onto these. Also, here's one of my desktop UPSs. You can kind of see some water spots on there that got wet, but it never fried. That still works, but I kind of don't trust it now, so I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, like I said before, so both of these UPSs now cover everything in both of these racks which that's a new thing because before it was only maybe like half the things were on those desktop UPSs because they were getting overloaded and I had to pick and choose what I could have on them and I didn't want to just fill the whole room with desktop UPSs. I was waiting until I could find some nice big rack mount ones. Uh, so I was able to actually get these uh, for pretty cheap and uh, they did, they are used and like I said I'm gonna have to probably replace the batteries soon. So I think they're like four or five hundred dollars for the battery pack and I should get another five years out of them. I think the chassis is four or five years old. So they should still be good for another five years or so. Um, in the front here we've got this uh, micro PC, it's an Optiplex 9020. That's just running Windows 10. It has a VLC playing a full screen RTSP stream of my Blue Iris security camera uh, multi view. And uh, next to it, we've got a uh, HDMI over IP transmitter, which puts that out onto the network so that I have uh, like two or three other monitors that have the receivers that can all pick up that multi view so I don't have to have a dedicated computer for each one so that's actually really handy I like that a lot uh, we've got it scripted to auto start auto login auto run the uh, VLC script that runs that full screen multi view so it's pretty nice I'm happy with that our Sophos firewall which uh, we're in the process of replacing it's going into life so it's uh, getting replaced with PFSense, which actually I have running on one of these Dell servers uh, as a VM. Uh, somebody in one of the other videos had commented that that was not secure, but I don't know why it wouldn't be. Uh, it's got two dedicated physical NICs, one for the WAN side, one for the LAN side, that just go directly over into the core switch, and none of the other VMs use those. so. Barring any misconfiguration, it should be pretty secure. Um, at some point, maybe I'll put it on dedicated hardware, but it's fine how it is for now. I'm in the process of getting everything moved over to there. 
I've got so many VLANs and um, firewall rules and port forwards and static reservation, DHCP reservations and host definitions. I did so much stuff that's on this little firewall that I've accumulated over the last 10 years. So it's taken a while to move everything over. Um, I did move one of my public IPs over to it so I can start testing and, and slowly moving some services over. Um, so that's a process. Hopefully uh, it won't be too bad. And I don't remember if I already said at the beginning, I'm trying to move some of the stuff out of this Cisco switch. I uh, just want to get rid of that altogether. I don't need it anymore. It's not PoE, it is gigabit, but it's just not necessary because I have this now. I didn't have any of these. This was Cisco switch was my very first switch in this office. It sat on my desk for several years with this little Dell uh, Optiplex under the desk. And that was my whole network. I had this little Sophos, that switch, a little uh, Linksys access point, and that Dell server. Uh, that was my whole network and sitting under my desk in the other room in my office. But now I have a lot larger of an infrastructure and it's a lot easier to manage. I feel a lot more comfortable um, with the reliability of actually running like enterprise hardware. So anyway, let's take a look around the back. We'll get to some of these enhancements. So here are the two back of the rack switches. Uh, these are Netgear, let's see, ProSafe S3300-28X. Um, both of these RJ45s that are kind of separated off to the side, as well as these SFP cages, those are actually SFP Plus, and uh, all four of those do 10 gig Ethernet. So that's really nice. I can have a 10 gig uplink. Um, I originally, for some reason, I don't know why, I thought that these were unmanaged. I got these secondhand as well. They're apparently out of support, end of life now, but still work. So that's why there's two, because the top one is our management network, so it's got the uh, PDUs, it's got the UPSs, the uh, iDRAC for one of the servers, and the second one is just our internal services network. So any actual like client-facing services just for the inside, nothing that's exposed to the internet. So it'd be like um, the file server, print server, um, and things like that, whatever. Um, so I only have one thing in it right now, but I'm working on, again, like I said, moving some of the stuff off the Cisco and um, putting it on these. Probably just temporarily, I'm not sure. I am trying to reduce the number of cables that have to go from this rack to the other one. So just some low bandwidth applications, like all these management interfaces, those might actually just stay on that switch and I'll just have one cable go over to that core switch. I don't need to have 20 cables going over there just for management cards of things. Um, but the internal services, I might actually just do away with that. Uh, actually, I 100% will do away with that at some point in the future. All the servers are gonna have dedicated cable runs over to the core switch. Um, but that's just kind of serving a temporary purpose to help me get rid of that Cisco switch out of the front and get rid of those patch panels. Anyway, moving on, you can see nothing really has changed back here. I've reorganized the cables. Well, not really organized, but kind of grouped all the power cords on one side. Um, and I have to do a little bit more organizing. I want to get this fiber down off of here. That's going to move over to the network rack. All these Ethernet cables are going to get tied up to the side rail so it's all gonna look real nice but it's just gonna be a little bit of a process to get it done then we have our UPS's down here we got the two of them uh, they do have management cards so that's really nice uh, it sends me email alerts when they go on and off the battery power system health alerts temperature alerts things like that um, I can also log in and check the current 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 uh, current voltages um, whatever else there is, just general health and statistics. So I've also got over here uh, these outlets. I think I've shown in another video, but there's actually two dedicated circuits feeding these two boxes. So the box on the right is for a, uh, it's a 30 amp twist lock that's directly going to one of the UPSs. And the box on the left is actually, um, it, that's what I was using before, that's why it has just those uh, 20, 15 and 20 amp outlets in there because those just have those UPSs and some PDUs plugged into it. But, so I've got this like camper adapter 
converting that 30 amp twist lock into a 15 amp plug that's going in there. But that UPS only has like five amps on it right now. So that's safe, that's not a problem. But I am going to go ahead and probably pull all of those outlets out and put just a 30 amp twist lock there in its place. So that way just the two UPSs will both be on their own dedicated circuits. Um, anyway, so I'm really happy about that. I've been wanting to do that for so long. I'm always worried, just when I, before I had those and everything was just plugged into the wall. Well, not that, right here. Um, actually, there's another one you can't hardly see behind this door. But anyway, those two outlets were powering all this stuff. And I don't know what else is on the circuit. It's probably shared with a neighboring unit. And I was just have always been worried that the breaker was going to trip and not really having any kind of notifications. I wouldn't know that it happened. Everything would just shut off. So I really like just the sense of security that I have two dedicated circuits for both of those UPSs and they have the network management card so I'll immediately know when they go on battery power and then if they end up shutting down because the power doesn't come back on I'll be able to know that also. So anyway that I think covers just about everything that has changed in here. So I'll keep you updated whenever I uh, make any further changes, which hopefully will be pretty soon. Um, I'm making a lot of progress and that's kind of giving me some motivation to keep going. So just a few more things. The next biggest thing is gonna be getting rid of that Cisco switch completely and moving the patch panel over. The next biggest thing after that is gonna be getting rid of the firewall and going to PF Sense. Then I wanna end up getting a couple more Dell servers I want to get this uh, NAS off the Precision and put it on a Dell server, and then I want to add a third uh, VMware host, because um, I only have two right now. One of these, these three servers here, two are VMware hosts, and one is my uh, Blue Iris server. Uh, so anyway, I think that about does it. I uh, appreciate you for watching, and we'll catch you next time.